Hey. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> it sounds so hollow in here. Oh, but I love it. This is the kind of hollow that I like. Everybody that I believe needs to be outside is outside with the exception of a couple. So hey, welcome to my very, very empty winter orchid holding space. I thought I'd let you have a look-see while we can move around because there's really, hmm, should I say, not much to see here, but still something to see. So thank you for joining me. We are in a very empty space, as you can see. That's the way. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I like it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Meanwhile, Siliano is having a field trip in the background. Anyway, don't get carried away. Got everybody outside. Everything's been cleaned up. Everything's been scrubbed until, let's say, the little birdies come in and make a mess again. But so far, I've managed to keep the order here for the past two days. So unfortunately, my Garen Weaver here looks like it's going to be history. Yeah. A big casualty of neglect during the winter months. That was super bad of me. My Iona is still going strong. I feel as though we've just done an indoor tour, but I think it had something to do with blooms. So she's still around, as is my Vanderglossum Alexandra, also still around. I've lost a couple of blooms since then. She is pending to go outside, but I don't want to do that to her while she's in bloom. She smells so nice. She needs to stay in because every time I walk past here, she gives me great vibes. So this monstrosity here, I always forget the name, Dimarandra Imarginata. I should remember that because it actually sounds like a pasta. So <laughs> Rene Marquez crossed with Dimarandra Imarginata. I took her outside this morning to clean the leaves, get her ready to be in her summer spot outdoors. And I realized, oops, she's in bud very very late i must say that's why i brought her back in and i hope that we are actually going to see some blooms even if it's just two here there is another spike tucked away i know i'm gonna have backlight c'est la vie there's another spike right here so i'm not sure if that's going to bloom out but i have to say that i've had more blooms out of this orchid in the past so if she doesn't bloom out, if she does the bud blast, well, at least we'll get her outside sooner rather than later so that she can grow some proper growths again. Another one that I have indoors still is my Caularthrum by Cornutum that I got from the orchid room. You can see there's buds there. And I would like to see the blooms. They blasted last year. Hmm. So I'm trying to protect her from ants. And yeah, she is pending to go outside, but I really would love to see these gorgeous little white blooms again. Stop it. Ants permitting, that would be amazing. And of course, we looked at the seedlings, so here's my Maxima. She is also staying inside. What I've done is pushed forward all of the complex Phalaenopsis hybrids to get the maximum amount of light. So this is going to be their location. The angle of the sun still hits them through the glass. That is a bit of a concern. So I am like a yo-yo every once in a while, jumping up, touching the leaves, trying to make sure nothing burns. It's a bit overcast today, so if you see any reflection, it's nothing. It's only 22 degrees outside, but at least we have great humidity. It's about 86% humidity, which is very, very unusual. But you see this, my Kaukicha Kut, it's actually a going, going, gone orchid. Lost all the leaves during the winter. And I told you I saw something green at the stem, so I was going to keep it. And we still have that green at the stem. Now, that could just be another flower spike that is still trying to make it. But that little thing has developed since it was a tiny little nubbin when I showed her losing her leaves. So I'm taking care of it. I don't have high hopes for this orchid. It's too cold during the winter. She is too slow of a grower for the summer months for her to recover. I don't have high hopes, but you know what? Again, we're going into the warm months, the growing season. 
if this was the other way around, if this was fall or let's say winter, I would already have ditched her. But in this circumstance, I've got the space and we'll see what she does. And anyway, yeah, I think I did mention that Ninja Yellow did not bloom for me again this year. So let me try and get up without pulling a muscle. My Bulbophyllum, Elizabeth and Buckleberry. Okay, we've got this growth advancing. She's not the happiest of orchids. Bulbophyllums don't do well in my climate, A. I don't have the space for them, even though the setup is nice and humid. But I don't think we'll see any blooms. There's not enough light for her. There's another little growth coming here. And you know what? As long as she's doing something, I'm not going to toss her. She is never going to really, really bloom well for me or grow well for me. She's always like tucked in the corner where there's not enough light. Other orchids have priority and only now does she have maybe enough light, but it's too late to ask for a bloom. So here we have a little bit more of a Phalaenopsis complex hybrid, and this is my Vasconcelos Diana. I think she's a goner. Now there is damp around underneath the lava rock, but she's not looking good at all. Looking good, however, are my Lycasti blooms. <laughs> Very beautiful. Look at that. And since we saw her last, her second bloom opened. So this is the older bloom and her petals curled backwards. Not sure I like this look at all. I do love the color combo though. But I'm not too hip about petals curling back on a bloom like this. This shape, yes. So we'll see if this one curls back as well. Ooh, she's sticky too. When this one opened, it was still a little bit on the cooler side. Maybe that's got something to do with it. My Leodora Sweet Memory. I think this is her swan song with me in the collection. Got another bud in the back. It's gonna be a shame to lose this orchid, but this is not good. This is not good at all, and I'm not going to make any bones about it. I'm not going to try and say, well, save her. I don't think so. If this was her reaction after a second cold winter, then we'll just enjoy the blooms. We'll see what she does throughout the season. We'll make our decision at the end, maybe around November. We'll see what we're going to do, whether we keep her or she goes elsewhere. And then up here, of course, we have the Arangus Fastuosa now. I propped in some bamboo skewers because I don't want her to lean out. We did a repot on her. I have no idea how the roots are doing. I have them right in the back there, supported with a bit of lava rock. But as she is growing a second new leaf and it's looking marvelous, I honestly think she's okay. I've lost one leaf here to the right, but that's to be expected. You know, the leaves don't last forever, so it wasn't like I was shocked. But this new leaf, it's, mm, it's giving me hope, and I've just propped her up so she doesn't start to lean forward. If hopefully the plan works, the roots that we saw in the back on the repot are growing down into the ceramis. And then the little Ungracum didieri that we potted up. The root is extending. I think the root tip has stopped growing, but since we potted her up, that root has extended. So there's that. And then something that we don't see a lot, but these have been in ICU for the past two years. This is my Purple Gem Aida, one of the pieces that I have because of scale. And she was in dire, dire straits. But I've got lots of roots, don't have active roots, nothing happening at the moment. But she's been growing in this setup for two years because I'm undecisive of what I'm going to do with her up until I bought myself a new bag of lava rock where I'm thinking, hey, now that I've got this stuff, I'm not going to put her back into Lekka, even though she grew well in Lekka. Oh, we have an active root tip on this piece in the back. Hang on a second. Maybe I can show you. There. Active root tip. Yeah, I'm thinking just lava rock to be on the safe side because she's a gorgeous little orchid. Wouldn't want to lose her. That's why I have two pieces here now in ICU for the past two years. Can you believe it? 
Sorry about the natural fertilizer on the leaves. It's, a, it's an ongoing thing. When the wild birds come in to visit Celiano, I still haven't cut off the spikes of my Aurora 3.0. <laughs> Loath to do so. But I did cut off the spikes of the Mini Mark. So I gave her a rest. I don't want her to grow well. She just seems to want to bloom and bloom. And I'm like, yeah, no, I want more roots from you because she was only transitioned last year. Waiting on Sopressa to get some active root growth. Got some calcium nitrate chucked into her today. Same as with Roberto's Nube. Also calcium nitrate. Those are the two. Let's scooch back a bit. Those are the two that are waiting to be transitioned. Romeo's Nuba here, also in calcium nitrate. Now, this is what's going on with my insolence. It's bad. We knew it was going to be bad, especially me rescuing Phalaenopsis orchids with a terminal spike. No roots. Took out the leaves at the base, hoping, hoping for roots to be able to come out give them some access and I'm left with two main leaves. One spike has already been fully absorbed. So I took her out of that water wet dry cycle and just, you know, swag and bag and see if the humidity in the bag does trigger something. I doubt it. And for this year, we have a plan for the pulcra. Two plans actually. I'm either going to mount her or put her into a semi-hydro setup with lava rock. She's been with me also almost two years and haven't figured this one out because look, I mean, her roots are growing everywhere. So she is an orchid that would love and do well mounted. It's just that my climate and then I have winter space to consider. My mind has been going a hundred miles an hour these past weeks. What am I going to do with the orchids that I'm going to mount on organic mounts? Where will they fit during the winter? Because I have a small conundrum, people. My orchids outside don't fit the way they should fit, have fit in the past. And I was saying I was going to be bumping up orchids into bigger pot sizes as opposed to making divisions. Well, my configuration outside is not matching. That's why we're not doing an outside tour today. I'm still trying to figure out what is going on out here. Why is it not working? Why are these things not falling into place? So I may have to rethink my bumping up and be a little bit more strict on who gets bumped up and who doesn't, because this is not making any sense at all. At least outside it isn't. So, Tolumnia's in gorgeous bloom, orange spread, very happy, anonymous. Looky here, more blooms have opened and spotty. Cheerful, love them. And then, of course, they haven't been outside since they've arrived in the collection. I would like to try them out this summer, but I'm going to maybe just leave them in here for one more summer just to see, maybe get a growth to behave and grow upright instead of this. <laughs> it also says, mount me, mount me. And I'm like going, oh, I'm so tempted, but I don't want to, not like this. And I need to do some weeding, as you can tell but I didn't want to dislodge any roots. Anywho, here we have the recently repotted or not repotted, but actually potted Cattleya Maxima variety Cerula from Matt by Nature. Lava Rock Semi-Hydro. We just put her in the pot, got the active root going. It's nicely done finding its way there onto the Lava Rock. I would like it to go down further. Doing well, happy. The Santhina, also, the roots are still hydrating beautifully. Esto aquí. Doing well. Here are my three little, let's say, speciality neos. This is my Gojo Fukurin. Doing well, slow grower, but we've got a root coming. Muy importante. Here is Shutano, also doing well but I have covered her new roots with sphagnum moss because as you can see, we're right by the terrace door. And if I'm not around, I don't want those root tips to frazzle on me prematurely. I'm hoping that with the sphagnum moss being slightly damp, that they will find their way down into the ceramus and become 
semi-hydro roots. That is, oh, keeping finger crossed that that happens. And my Kibana, well, if you want a slow poke Neo Phoenicia, Kibana is for you. What a slow growing orchid. The Gojo Fukurine at least is showing me signs of something. The Kibana with its new fan on the left there, showing me something, but I have to literally ignore it for two months, so to speak, to see any progress, any improvement, any increase in size. No roots, nothing. But the roots in the pot, they are viable. So I'm hoping she is on her way to just establishing herself in her little pot. That would be amazing. Here we have mm, supposedly Perinii. I am not entirely sure it is one. You see the spotting on the leaves, that's concerning. I'm not seeing any active signs of roots. Oh, the little ones that I have tucked in there, yes, they would. They do do something, but it's, mm, it's touch and go. It's not entirely sure how good that is actually working out for this orchid. And then we have the Cattleya Rex from yesteryear, 2018. Incredible. Incredible. She is protected from any kind of pests, any kind of scale that she always, always seems to try to get. And I'm still waiting to see if this orchid's going to do anything for me at all. You cannot imagine if I tell you that I had this orchid since 2018. My little Bilatalum, though. I think I see a tiny little new leaf coming out. It's so minute, it probably won't even show on camera. And then I have my Muscicola here from the Afri Orchids order. There we go. Those roots are just chugging away in that pot. Don't have new root growth, but she is still alive. I have one burnt leaf tip and I've not fertilized her that much anymore. If she's a slow grower, I gotta learn to back off on the fertilizer, but she is still alive. We do have a nice little leaf extending. So hopefully this being the third, no, second year that she is with me. Let's see how she does. Recently repotted Paphia pedalum, doing amazing. It's been flushed and it's also been scooted forward a bit because of this leggy growth right here. We did a live stream repotting with this one, maybe the couple of centimeters closer to the light will help this orchid out as well. And then Gratricianum also got it a little bit scooted to the front as well for some more light. Doing fabulously, in my opinion. Love this one. Now I'm just, before I go down again, let me show you all the little ones up here. Spikes have been cut. The Keiki, Walter Jr., Vega Cecilia. We repotted a, an aerial root on this one for a live stream. The root has not failed and we're getting another root coming out right there. And yes, if that turns out to be an aerial root, <laughs> it's gonna get potted up. I want Vega Cecilia to grow strong. Then here's my Sogo Vivian. This is my alcohol victim, garlic alcohol victim. And I took all the rage frustration out on this orchid back in the day when I saw scale. Scale taking out a lot of my complex Phalaenopsis hybrids in the years 2017 through <laughs> 2021, which I didn't realize that Phalaenopsis had scale. I thought it was all stem rot. It wasn't. And then it just came to a hilt. I saw scale on my Sogo Vivian and I drowned the orchid. I literally doused her. It was just, it was, it was all wrong. Everything you don't do with garlic alcohol, I did with this orchid. And um, yeah, since then she grew this little leaf that obviously still had some cell damage probably inside the stem because that's how I doused her and how heavy handed I was. And now she's growing this one. She was a very pretty orchid, grew really, really well. And I did a number on her and she's that root there. <laughs> you can see I've been taking Lekka away. I'm just uh, slowly filling Lekka back in. So that one root is extremely important for the survival of this orchid. Super, super reluctant root grower. It is so annoying. Now, 
Back here, I have my little Aurora 2.0. She's not the Peloric type, just a single bloom, but I'm letting her bloom out. I want to make 100% sure that this is the Aurora 2.0 because of the fragrance as in the 3.0. I love that fragrance so much. Um, I thought I had lost all my Auroras. Anyway, if this happens to be Aurora 2.0, of course, I'm going to be cutting that spike off so that she can also gather more strength. But she is, she is, you know, rooted in the pot, which is the only little mini phalaenopsis that is actually rooted in. So, huh, could have had a better spike, I suppose, but something is better than nothing. She's been through the ringer with me. And here is Maxi. I just took the spike off. This is my little white mini phalaenopsis. Right, on the top, I still haven't cut the spikes off. I figured we'd look at them one more time because they are gorgeous but then the spikes are coming off and then we'll go down to the lower shelf and have a look at them the orchids that are down there delicious, gorgeous oh yeah Sheila Rihanna is up here too she's just got a bath of calcium nitrate as well a bath as in a soak I'm pushing calcium into this orchid uh, again. I think she loves her calcium and for that reason, maybe you should show the plant. Good grief. Sorry about that. For that reason today, calcium nitrate went into her pot. All right, let's go down a floor or two. From left to right, we are going to start with my dodgy OG Leptotus bicolor. No shame in the game. This came from Schwerta from that dodgy order of all time. And here's my Orangus mysticidii, growing a new leaf. That's great. Now I'm gonna keep watching her. Don't need any mealy bugs to do a number on the leaves like they did last year. So she's had her preventative treatment. I'm telling you, I've been busy in this space like all get out. Here is Bloomin' Shiny Eye, the little back bulb that, well, we saved. And from a single bulb, this is where we're at right now. I need more roots in that pot. But look, <laughs> this bulb came off when I took the main plant and potted her up. I thought, yeah, no harm, no foul. I didn't pot the bulb up. But all of a sudden, I saw a growth coming out of it, which was this one. And then another growth came, which is this one. And I'm like, oh, I hope the mother plant takes a hint because... Yes, she's doing well. She's got so much more strength than her, but she is not performing the way this one is. <laughs> it's astounding. And here we have then my Lodigesii. This is my Caracetum, wait, Caracetum Signodis Signoches Lodigesii. Doing much better. It's lost its back growth right here. It's trying to grow some roots, which I hope are going to do well, much needed. And this is its growth of this year. So this was the growth from 2022 when I had this whole shelf as my worst shelf ever because there was mites and thrips in action here. So that was all a bit of nonsense going on and this orchid was affected. Now she's had several preventative treatments and I'm really, really checking the leaves to make sure that nothing takes this growth out. It is important because I didn't get much last year. Now that it's absorbed that one, it's high noon that this orchid does something to show me that it's, it's gonna be okay. Ceratostylus philippinensis, a present from the orchid room, Michael McCarthy and Melissa Walker. Also, everybody on this shelf, with the exception of the newcomers, new rescues, this was also affected by the mites, the thrips, everything that went on on this shelf. It's looking a little bit better. I'm getting a little bit new growth. It's not a happy orchid here in my climate. Far too dry, but I missed it every single day, be it with seaweed, cow mag, fertilizer at very low levels. So I'm hoping that this year it can recover all the leaves that were affected last year by the mites or the pests, whatever it was, they, they have now dried up and disappeared. Anything that I see growing now, I hope it's going to stick around. 
I really don't want to lose this orchid, but ooh, it's not looking good. There's still enough life in her though. And here is my little orchid having a bath. Actually, we can pick her up. This is my Lutio Alba, also from Anonymous. Look at that. I need some of those roots to extend. I hope that's all in shot. She grew a nice new leaf here. Hang on a second. Let me get you up closer. So you can see the mite damage. She held on. There was some left in the base and the growth point of the orchid last year. Very concerning, but the leaf grew. Now she has a clean leaf and a second clean leaf is coming in the center. I had two from Anonymous and one didn't make it. Look at the damage in the back here. Thrips is what my guess is, but she's clean. She's had her alcohol painted on her. I'm not seeing anything that is cause for alarm at the moment. I would like to see some root extension. So let's stop her soaking and let's hang her up. Hang on a second. This is where she hangs. <laughs> and here are all my Tolumnia rescues, as well as my Zelemia Midas, my Brassavola Gyrat Kiku, Brassavola, sorry, Brassocatlia Gyrat Kiku, they have developments. I don't want to show that right now in this video. It's getting too long already, but there are developments and if they progress or if they decline, it's too early to tell, but I'll obviously be making updates on all of this. And then this insane root system <laughs> from a berry Oda Keiki. You gotta love, you gotta love dendrobiums. They weren't even water roots when I took the Keiki off the mother plant. And they're fully just like, yeah, okay, I'm in water, who cares? <laughs> On the shelf below the rescue space, I have started to move my Lady Chatterley forward. I am extremely concerned about this orchid. I kid you not, I have lost three leaves very, very quickly. And you can see it's yellow here, more green there. That is not a good sign. I saw two mealybugs on her early, early spring. I took care of them. I've lost a spike here as well. Started from the base, moved the, moving outwards. Been picking away at this stem consistently, trying to make sure there's nothing untoward. I hope it's just shock, and I hope there's nothing wrong with her because this would be leaf number four or five. So that I'm very concerned about this orchid. Don't want to lose her, but the reality is this is not looking good at all. Fingers crossed. My Tigrina here, Trichocentrum Tigrina, still gets flushed every other day. Maybe we'll see something happen. Maybe we won't. My Twinkle, we've had developments. We'll do a video on her. Change of plans, change of scenery, change of setup. And another orchid we're probably going to say goodbye to is my Vanda Vietnamica. During the winter, I chopped her out of her pot, put her into this high, high humidity kind of bowl thing with microfiber, trying something. She, she hates my environment and I should have known better, but I thought I could make it work. And that was five years ago when I thought I could make it work. Now I know better. Mm, very cross about that. So this is the current status quo of the indoor grow space, winter holding area for my orchids. I'm so glad that it's empty. Now I have to figure out what am I doing wrong outside? Why are the orchids not fitting the way they were? I wasn't doing any winter repots. There's no excuse why there is no room outside like there used to be in the past. Most annoying. Little Nat, you have no business being here. Goodbye. But anyway, speaking of goodbye, I want to say thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the hollow sound of the great indoors. And when I figured out what's going on outside, I'll take you outside to the patio and show you who's outside, where they are, and what expectations I have for the season. In the meantime, though, I want to say thank you so, so much for watching. I wish you a wonderful day on that one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care.
Bye.